caught me in the middle of one of my favorite books, The Lord of the Flies by William Golding. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this book as I introduce it before you start reading it. The book was written by William Golding, published in 1984. Golding was a teacher when he began writing his writing career, but after writing Lord of the Flies and a couple of other books, he retired from teaching to become a full-time writer. The book is based on his experiences with World War II as he explored the violence and savagery that people are capable of. He was particularly uh, concerned with the uh, evil doings of the Nazi party. His novels are filled with symbolism and they are a mirror image of his view of human nature and we will learn from this book what he believes human nature is capable of and we read Lord of the Flies to begin understanding and identifying symbolism and how it comes out in the story so that's one of the big reasons we read this is to understand that creative symbolism that he uses so the setting is sometime in the future, the future being after 1954. Um, a plane load of British schoolboys are evacuated from England because of a nuclear war. There was a big concern after World War II that the Russians were building up um, atomic weapons and um, nuclear weapons and so there was um, this concern that, that they could destroy the entire world with these weapons and um, so this book is based around that fact that this this uh, plane full of uh, British school boys um, are evacuating England. Their plane is attacked by an unknown enemy and crash lands on an uninhabited island. The actual uh, location of the island is unknown, but it quite resembles um, islands that will be in the South Pacific, so we can assume that it's probably a, a South Pacific island. All of the adults are either killed or severely injured in the crash, crash leaving only the children to their own means to survive. Uh, the book starts with a plane crash and is very chaotic at first um, and it's confusing to a lot of people at the start um, the first few pages and it's to give you a sense of what the characters are feeling and going through the book begins to settle down and start to make more sense as the characters begin meeting, meeting each other and piecing together what has happened Let's talk about the characters. The characters are all boys between the ages of roughly 6 and 15 years old. They never actually say their ages, um, but they give indications as to how old they could be. Uh, the main characters that we follow mostly are between 11 and 13 years old um, in that range. The main character is Ralph. He is the son of a naval officer and a natural leader and he is the elected leader of the group and it's important to note Ralph represents civilization that will make more sense as you read the book um, but just note Ralph represents civilization Jack Jack is a self-centered contrast to Ralph um, he is the leader of the choir boys Jack represents savagery so Ralph represents civilization, Jack represents savagery. Make note of that as well. Piggy. Piggy is a friend of Ralph and he's a, a he most people end up liking him very much in this book. He is short and chubby and he has asthma. He wears very thick glasses which they call specs in the book. Piggy is an extension of Ralph which means whatever happens to Ralph also, or whatever happens to Piggy also happens to Ralph. So Ralph, or excuse me, Piggy is like the second in command representing civilization. 
Other characters, Simon. Simon is a small, timid boy. He keeps to himself and wanders frequently into the jungle. He is very, um, at, very much at peace with some of the things that are going on and also seems somewhat prophetic. Simon represents religion and some uh, people believe he represents Christ as well and you'll see some of that in his actions and what happens. Um, Sam and Eric are twins that articulate a lot of what the other boys are thinking. Um, they, they serve as a sounding board for what's going on. They kind of narrate some of the action for us. Um, there are also there are two characters, Sam and Eric, but eventually they become Sam and Eric, and that's their name throughout the book, um, is Sam and Eric, because they are, for the most part, together. Roger is Jack's best friend, so Piggy was the extension of Ralph. Roger is the extension of Jack. He is very cruel and brutal and carries out a lot of what Jack wants him to do. Um, and so anything that happens to Ro Roger also happens to Jack. And the Little ones, they are an unnamed group of boys that have no identity of their own. They, they, that's a typo. They are a collective group that needs support because they cry a lot and need to be fed and taken care of. So the little ones are just kind of uh, there to represent the bigger collective group that needs to be taken care of. Um, there's a couple other characters here and there that are named um, that you'll see, but these are the major ones. And make sure, I repeat, make sure you understand what they represent because that will come up later in our discussions. There are other symbols in this book besides just the characters and I'll give you a little bit about what they represent um, but it'll all the pieces will all come together as we read so some of the other items in this novel that are symbolic the island that they are on symbolizes the Garden of Eden for its uh, perfection its peaceful tranquility that kind of thing but it also represents mankind um, the plane crash represents the breaking down of society. The scar, which I won't tell you what the scar is, you'll see, but it represents man's destruction and corruption of a peaceful island. Piggy specks represent wisdom and knowledge, and they also become a very necessary resource um, on the island that you'll see creates some conflict. So they represent wisdom and knowledge. The conch, the conch shell represents civilization and authority. And you'll see when the conch shell comes out and what it does, what happens to it, all that kinds of stuff. Um, the signal fire represents hope and salvation. And the Lord of the Flies, which again, I won't tell you what the Lord of the Flies is. You'll find out about halfway through the book. They introduce what the Lord of the Flies is. But it represents um, either Satan or just evil in general. Um, the killing of the first pig um, represents original sin. And we all know the story of the Bible. Um, with the Garden of Eden and the original sin and all that stuff. And the beast um, represents an unknown fear that can be used by those in power. Um, and we'll see more of that. So these all probably don't make sense right now, but you should make note of what they mean because when they come out, when you start seeing these items, it'll be good to refer back to your notes and see what their symbolism means so you can piece it all together. So that is your introduction to Lord of the Flies. That um, concludes this lesson and you will begin reading it soon and I'm sure you will enjoy it.